Hey, everybody. We're back again with another C++ lesson, and I have my son, Alex, here with me. How's it going, Alex? Hello, as always. Nice Saturday morning, or afternoon now. Yeah, or Saturday evening, uh, as it is over here. Time zones. That's, Gotta love them. <laughs> Gotta love them. <laughs> We're here to talk about a very exciting subject today, uh, C++ on uh, this Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon. And uh, we have a very exciting lesson uh, talking about pure virtual functions and abstract classes. Uh, sounds complicated, but it's not really when somebody explains it to you. Uh, so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen and we shall get started. So, so here we are, uh, this is lesson 14, and this is about pure virtual functions and abstract classes. And in this lesson, we're gonna talk about what pure virtual functions are, coding concepts, and do a practical walkthrough. So what is a pure virtual function? So a pure virtual function is a function that resides in a base class that must the keyword being must be declared in any derived class. Okay. So let's start with a quick review of our last lesson, virtual methods. So we had this class, it was called animal. We had this virtual method called void move, uh, where we had some type of implementation that was in the base class, uh, where we just consoled out on moving. And then we have a derived class uh, called fish that uh, inherits animal. And in the derived class, this uh, fish had its own implementation of move uh, where we said, I'm swimming, right? Mm -hmm. Any questions about that so far? No. So a pure virtual function is just very slightly different from a virtual function in that the base, the base class does not actually have its own implementation. So we know that a pure virtual function is purely virtual when it has this equals zero at the end of uh, at the end of the function call, so you notice that there's no actual implementation. There's no uh, curly braces, right? Right. And what this means is that any derived class like fish must inherit must have an implementation of move. Uh, so in this case, we see that the class animal doesn't have its own implementation, and that we have implemented uh so what we need to do is we have to implement uh void move in any derive any class that derives from animal or else we will get an error okay okay so that's really all there is to it uh and that's that's really all a pure virtual function is it just makes us uh implement a uh a, a, a function call that doesn't have any implementation in the base class. So one question you may ask is, well, why is there no implementation in the base class? And we kind of touched on this a little bit in our last lesson in that we were saying, okay, an animal uh, may have this move function, but different animal animals move in different ways. Fish swim, horses gallop, dogs run, you know, and so on. And so what we may or may not choose to do is say, well, since every, since any derived class is going to need to have its own implementation of how this animal actually moves, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, we're going to make it required that any developer that's inheriting from this, uh, from this base class of animal needs to create their own move function and describe how the animal actually moves. Okay. Okay. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. So, so what if I inherited from fish instead of animal, would that move method still be required? 
That is a great question. <laughs> and I don't actually know the answer to that. I would, I would venture to say no, because so that's, so that gets into something called multiple inheritance. Um, and to be honest, I don't, I don't know 100% for sure, but I would venture to say that you would not because fish already has a move. Fish already has a move implementation. So anything deriving from fish would not, but we can actually test that in just a, uh, in just a moment. We'll test it and we'll see. So uh, I don't know the, the answer to that. Maybe I should know the answer to it, but uh, I don't. <laughs> And um, I would do like everybody else does and just Google it. Um, but uh, yeah, we will test it out just to, uh, to find out. So then you may say, so what's this other thing? An abstract class. All an abstract class is, is a class that has at least one virtual method. So animal is actually an abstract class because it has, because move is a pure virtual method. Okay. So it's more conjecture than an actual thing. Yeah. And you'll see what you'll see how that comes into play when we do our uh, when we do our coding walkthrough, because we will see that we'll get we'll actually get an error when we try to implement a class that uh, that that inherits animal. Oh, what's happened here? So. This is from uh, something we were actually doing the other day. <laughs> Go ahead and delete all of this, um, and um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what the error is, and it'll say something like, uh, "Fish is an abstract class, or animal is an abstract class." And unless you knew what an abstract class was, you wouldn't actually know what that meant. So, what we're going to do is we're going to make a class that's called animal, and we need to make sure that we make this function public. And so we will do void move equals zero. So now, uh, and we need to put the virtual keyword in front of it like that. So now animal is a virtual, uh, a, uh, an abstract class with a pure virtual function. Now we will make a class called horse which will inherit from animal. And now let's see what happens if I actually try to build this. Oh, you get actually build succeeded. So let's, oh, I think I need to do this one moment. So horse, horse. Yeah, so now we see what happens here variable type horse is an abstract class. Now, if you don't know much about C++, that would sound like a very cryptic error. But as you can see, horse has not implemented the pure virtual function move. So that's why we need to implement that. And we could just do that by saying void move and then C out and we do um, galloping. Like that. Okay, and now we shall build it. <clears throat> and now we get build succeeded, right? We can call horse.move. Oh, horse. Not horse animal move, horse stop move. Oh, and I need to declare this as public. There we go. Yeah, so not very different from uh, from what we had with the virtual methods from the lesson before, except the only difference being that this is now required. Or uh, any class that's deriving from animal is now required to implement move. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to try to uh, derive from horse and see if we need to re-implement move or not. So let's say uh, class, uh, 
Spanish horse. I think that's a type of horse. Uh, so now we'll, we'll go from public horse. Eat, eat it, Spanish hose. Oh, <laughs> Spanish hose. Uh, <laughs> got Spanish horse. And so now we will try to do Spanish. This will be an interesting one as well, because what we got build succeeded. So that works. So it looks like you do not have to re-implement uh, a, pure, a pure virtual function in any classes that are deriving from an abstract class that, uh, that's inherited by another. So yeah, let me say that again. So it looks like you do not need to implement a pure virtual function for a derived class that's deriving from another class that's deriving from a, an abstract class. Yeah. So it's like a type of a type of a type. Exactly. A type of a type of a type. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's really all there is to it. Like I, like I was saying before, there are, quite a few different nuances in terms of uh, what, what information can be shared between base classes and derived classes. Uh, and they're, uh, I should probably know them, but anytime I need to know, I actually just look it up. Uh, but yeah, that, that is really the essence of it. And so, so now you have a uh, class human Once again, derives from from public animal, and now, once again, you would need to implement your own creature and impl implementation of void move, which would be something like I'm running. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions about that? No, no. Actually, I have one question. It's kind of sort of related, but so I noticed that <clears throat> when I was digging into juice, um, there was a lot of virtual functions mm. or virtual methods where you were prompted to override them mm -hmm. with your own implementation. And so I kind of, understand now that it's that you can use it as its sort of template like you can put down the the template of the class and then the user can actually override each method with their specific nuanced use case exactly so so sometimes you may want to have a class that has its own base implementation so we could do something like this where we make another virtual method called void, uh, let's say that we call it eat. And we just say, um, <clears throat> I'm eating. Right. And then what you can do is you could actually just override that. So this is where the override keyword comes in. I think I think for pure virtual functions, I, I had a look and, and some people I think advise to use the override keyword and some people do not. So let's let's just have a we'll explore that very shortly. So void eat. Uh, so now now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do void eat override. And we'll do see out uh, some I don't know, I'm chomping. So, yeah, so, so now we see that move overrides a member function, but it's not marked override. So, so we want override to uh, the override keyword to be shown for pure virtual methods as well. So that is something that I forgot to uh, actually mention, even though in a lot of tutorials, because I actually looked at this <clears throat> before we started, uh, that 
in a lot of tutorials, it does not show the override keyword. Uh, so yeah, so that's, so, so there you are. Uh, so let me just make sure that that is correct. Horse, horse, and then horse dot move. And we got build succeeded. So there you go. So override, just, just to uh, reiterate, override is something that um, in my experience doesn't actually give you a, an error if you don't use it, but it's something that's more for the reader of the, of the code or somebody who else, somebody else who's also coding in your code base to know that move or eat is a function that is being inherited or that you're, that you're getting, that you're overriding that from a base class rather than creating that method yourself from scratch. Any other okay. questions? No, no. Um, I think I understand. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, that's, that's really it for this lesson. Pretty short one. Uh, yeah, but actually incredibly useful. Cause like I said, I see this everywhere in, in juice, maybe not yeah. so much the, the, uh, pure virtual functions, but the, uh, the virtual methods they're everywhere and, and that. So, yeah, virtual methods, virtual methods are there. And a lot of pure virtual methods are there as well. So for instance, this jumps ahead a little bit, but something like the timer, they have a timer class in, in Juice where you can actually inherit, where you, where you can actually inherit from a, uh, from a timer that you can start and you can stop. But there's a pure virtual function in the timer class called uh, timer callback because it assumes that if you're going to, if you're going to, to use a timer that you want something to happen when the timer actually starts. So it makes you implement this timer callback function in order to uh, tell what behavior you actually want to happen when you have a timer running. Which is pretty useful because like you said, you, don't, you wouldn't want to have a timer not do anything. But. Yeah, exactly. It's fantastic design because, because otherwise if you don't, have a pure virtual function called timer callback, then the timer is really useless because you're not actually telling the timer, you're not actually telling anything to happen uh, while the timer is actually started. Yeah, great. Cool, that's where we will end this tutorial for today. Uh, if you found this helpful, be sure to like and subscribe and all that stuff. And we will see you next time where we'll talk about static functions. Static. I've seen that a lot too. Very curious. Great. All right. See you later. See you guys.